Hello and welcome back. This is Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana, and you are watching Marksman TV. As a reminder, please remember to stop by and check out our Facebook page for any updates. The link is down in the description. Today's video is a tabletop review and comparison of the brand new Ruger PC9 carbine and the kel 7000. This is a generation 2 9mm with Glock magazines. We will be doing a point-by-point -point comparison starting up at the muzzle, moving all the way through the back, comparing every single detail of these two carbines. So when you're making a decision between the two, you are more informed of what these both uh, what both of these platforms have to offer. If that sounds interesting to you, please stick around. That's coming up now. Now let's go ahead and start off with an unboxing. Now the kel Sub 2000 that I have is actually pre-owned. It's owned by one of my buddies that let me use it for this review. So I don't have the original box, but that just comes in a cardboard box with the one magazine and really that's about it. Manuals, paperwork, that sort of stuff. Um, there's a million videos online if you're really interested in an unboxing of that. Just search Sub 2000 unboxing and there you'll, you'll go. Uh, Ruger PC Carbine comes in a nice Ruger cardboard box with all the Ruger graphics on it. Just like most of their other, other carbines and products. So we'll go ahead and start by opening that up. On the inside you will see the carbine in a black plastic sleeve, which I will go ahead and remove. So if I can get to it here. Okay. So there that is, and I'll set that aside. Now here's your warranty information and paperwork. Coming down here is your 117 round um, SR9 magazine, and then here's your gun cable lock. Uh, a couple Allen keys which you will need for, for full detail disassembly. This one you will need for basic disassembly. Uh, these two I think for further disassembly of the firearm. Now uh, this is a magazine well adapter for Glock magazines which I will show you later on in this review how to install. It is very easy. And then here are a couple butt plates. So the carbine does come with one installed. There are two more each at a half inch in length. So it could, could give you a longer length of pull if that's what you want if you have different shooters in the family. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the overall dimensions of these two carbines, starting up here with the Ruger PC carbine. So the Ruger does have an overall length of 34.37 inches. Now, with this taken apart, which I'll show you in a little while, it basically comes apart at this joint. The longer of the two halves is here, and it does have a length of 20.25 inches, and this section will have a length of 16.25 inches. But if you're going to stow this in any type of bag, you can, of course, take the front off and kind of store it over the top of the back in any type of bag. So the overall length of the of the product at that point would just be 20.25 inches. Now the barrel length is 16.12 inches and it does have an overall weight of 6.8 pounds. Now moving down here to the Sub 2000, it does have an overall length of 30.5 inches. Now when this thing is folded and collapsed, which I'll show you in a little bit, it does have a collapsed length of 16.25 inches, which is the same length of the barrel at 16.25 inches and it does have an overall weight of four and a quarter pounds so it is actually a little more than a full two pounds heavier than the Ruger carbine and if you look at the overall length it does have an overall length of about four and a half inches shorter so uh, again a little bit lighter and a smaller package Okay, now let's go ahead and talk about the barrels of these two carbines. We'll go ahead and start up here with the PC carbine. So as mentioned, the barrel length here is 16.12 inches. It is a cold hammer forged chrome molly vanadium steel barrel. And it does have these lightning cut flutes in here. Now the finish on the barrel itself is a bluing agent. Now up here on the front, there is a thread protector, which does cover threads of a one half by 28 thread pitch. If you want to run any type of muzzle device or a suppressor on here, you can feel free to do that, which is a pretty cool feature. Now up here at the front, the sight base is not machined into the front of the barrel. It, it does have two screws that hold the front sight base in place so you can remove that. Now keep in mind the front sight base does not have any provisions for windage or elevation adjustments. That's all handled on the rear of the sight base. Um, and I'll bring this in and show you in just a second. Now, the forend here is a nylon glass filled high impact polymer. It's a very heavy, very good weight to it, good balance. Now up here at the front, you will see a, um, a provision if, if you want to run a rail mounted uh, bipod you can do that also if you have a Harris style bipod you can mount that up here on this little Harris stud also this can work if you want to attach a sling swivel or anything like that so you do have a lot of options here on this platform 
Now back here at the rear is the rear sight, which is windage and elevation, elevation adjustable. It is also not machined into the top of the barrel, so you can remove it. It is held in place by a little hex screw. So you can remove that tool and switch out your sights, or you can just easily remove both your sights to lighten it up and kind of take off some of the edginess of the front end a little bit if you are just planning on running an optic. Keep in mind, since this is a takedown, in most cases, if you are running a red dot or a scope or anything on the back of the carbine, anytime you take your barrel down or remount it, you might have to do some re-zeroing. I'm not gonna say that that's always gonna be the case, but typically when you remove a barrel and replace it, you will have to re-zero as the harmonics and you know, sort of the slight variations in any type of changing and the barrel alignment can throw your shot off, even if it's just a small variation. So uh, keep that in mind as well. Just bringing this in to show you, there is of course the front of the threads there is the top of the sight that has those two screw heads there. Here are the barrel flutes which do lighten up the weight of the barrel. Bringing you back in here, there is the little area there if you want to run a, uh, a bipod that mounts onto a, a rail. This is polymer in construction just like the rest of the foreign, it's not metal. There's your little Harris stud and then moving back there are your rear sights which are dovetailed for windage adjustment and then you can elevate them up and down this ramp for elevation. Also the twist on this is one in 10 right hand. Now moving down into the Caltech Sub 2000, we do have a 16.25 inch barrel and it is a one in 10 right hand twist. It is forged from 4130 steel and does have a blue finish on it. Now you will notice up here, the front sight post is very tall. That's of course to meet with the rear sights back here. Um, well now it is adjustable for windage and elevation up here at the front, which I'll bring it in close and show you in just a second. Now we do have a black polymer forend here, which is very small, uh, definitely enough to just wrap your entire hand around. It's not the most comfortable thing, but it really keep, helps keep that lightweight and low profile, which is great. As compared to this, I mean, the grip texturing up here is a lot nicer. It's more like a kind of a sandpaper type texture here. It does definitely feel heavier and beefier in weight, but with that is going to come overall more size and weight. So. Kind of keep that in mind as you're going through this. Are you more interested in having something that's a lot more lightweight and, and maneuverable and, and something that can be easily stowed away and carried maybe in a backpack or something that gives you a little bit more of a comfortable shooting experience? And sort of through this, I'll show you that the kel is more of kind of that really easy to carry backpack gun. The PC carbine is just a little bit more comfortable for more of that shooting or recreational kind of shooting experience. But um, Anyway, continuing through here, you do have these sort of rectangular patterns here, which is indicative of what you see in a lot of SIG products, or SIG, uh, Kel Keltec products. Now, there are a bunch of Allen screws that you can remove if you want to. It's just basically just two pieces that are clamshelled over the front end of the barrel and then screwed together. It's basically all it is. Very simple. If you want to take that off for whatever reason, uh, if you want to make your own forend or uh, if you want to switch the color on it or anything like that, you can actually buy these parts separate from Keltec. Now, these do come in black. You can also get them flat dark earth and OD green. Uh, currently, the PC carbine, I think, is only offered in black, but like anything else, I'm sure different color options will come out of the market. Now, here is the front of the barrel there to show you. Now, the front of the sides, you will see very much like an AR-15. It is windage and elevation adjustable back here on the rear. Uh, as you see, you can adjust the elevation much like you would an AR. And then there's a little screw here, I'm trying to uh, sorry, get this at a weird angle, right there at the back of the side base. There is the handguard. Now these rails on the top and the bottom are also polymer in construction, so keep that in mind. They do go the full length, so you get right there. Okay, let's get into the, uh, the kind of the midsection of the receivers in both of these carbines. So you will notice this little break here because the barrel can come off, and I'll show you that in just a second. So all of this is a glass-filled nylon synthetic stock. Of course, it is black. Now you do have that sandpapery type grit back here, like you do up at the front. So here's your two contact points, which is nice. Uh, because this is just a very durable and almost heavy feel. It's almost kind of like if this were a wood stock, it would have a similar weight. The weight on here is definitely very heavy. Um, not going to help you in terms of carrying it, especially if you're going to go backpacking long distances. Um, but you know that weight will help you in terms of you know this being a nine millimeter the recoil is very light and very insignificant so very easy to shoot great for first time shooters especially uh if you're going to be doing some bench shooting if you have a young one uh, it might be difficult to shoulder and hold this i mean again it does have some weight to it uh but just nice and very durable feeling now the receiver itself is a cnc machine 7075 t6 aluminum uh, aerospace grade billet aluminum rather and it is type 3 hard coat anodized 
Now, right up here at the top, there is, it is all monolithic. It is one machine a piece. You do have a nice rail up here. So if you do want to run a red dot or any type of optics, you do have that option available to you. You also have this milled uh, charging handle here, which is held in place by a hex screw right through here in the middle. Now you can actually take that off and flip it over to this side. As you can see, there are provisions uh, for it to attach right here. Now when I get into this disassembly, I'll show you a little bit of that. Of course, you have your PC carbine and Ruger graphics here, and your serial number and a little UID code over here on this side. Now I will show you up close. You can see, of course, there's the charging handle and you can flip it over to this side if you like. Now, also the magazine release is reversible and you can flip that over to the other side if you like. Of course, there's your serial number UID code and the PC carbine and Ruger graphics right there. And then the top of the, uh, the I'm trying to say the rail here for you if you want to mount anything. Now moving into the Keltec Sub 2000, this receiver is a impact modified glass reinforced Zytel. So it is a really it's a nylon or polymer receiver, which is going to help you with the overall weight. Like we noticed on the floor, and there are a couple little hex screws that you can remove. And again, the receiver halves are sort of clamshell together. So you, you know, I mean, you could really strip this down easily with just a hex screw. Now that is not required if you want to do a field strip, and I will show you the field strip in just a second. Now, unlike the PC carbine, the magazine is actually housed directly into the uh, the grip itself, which again does keep you know having to have extra things out here at the front or anywhere else. It all stows right here. Now, this particular one uses Glock 17 magazines, which are 17 round, nine millimeter. You can also get this um, the Sub 2000, which holds the Glock 19 magazines, just a little bit shorter grip, which is the 15 round mags. Now in that one also, you can insert the Glock 17 round mags and the Glock 33 round stick mags. You can also stick the 33 round stick mags in here, which is fine. You can also get this in the Beretta 92 or 96, which is the nine millimeter and the 40, basically the M9 or the 92 FS. You can get this in the uh, SIG uh, 226 magazines in both nine and 40. And uh, you can also get this in the Smith & Wesson M&P series in both the 9 and the 40. So there are a lot of options. And that's what's kind of great about this is any handgun line you carry, um, there is more or less an option here for, for the most part, an option here for you to go with the Sub 2000 and you can share magazines. So that's a really nice feature. Now up at the top here, you do have a rudimentary sight, which is not adjustable. Keep in mind, all your adjustments are handled up at the front sight post. This is just a standard ghost ring peep sight stays in one place it is polymer in construction as well and it is sticking right up here so i mean if you are running through the woods and you bump this against a tree very feasible that you can bend or damage this so that it is one thing you will have to be cognizant of showing you in close there is the rear sight and the zytel receiver now here is your cross bolt safety which you can see when you switch here you will see um, sorry on this side red means dead so when you see that red it is ready to fire there is your uh, magazine release is of course on this side. It is not reversible, so it is not ambidextrous. Really set up for right-handed shooters only. So let's go ahead and talk about the triggers. Here is the Caltech Sub 2000. So right off the bat, you do have a little bit of take up right there. It is not that far, but you just go through it. You're right there at the wall. It feels to me almost like an AR-15 trigger. So you get there. From this point, you go ahead and push through. A Little bit of take up to right there, you hit the wall and then a nice clean break at around seven to nine pounds. Now, I'm going ahead and resetting the trigger, show you you got a little bit of release here. Right there is the reset. So really about 40% of the way back, really nice early reset. From that reset, of course, there's very little take up, go into a nice clean break. Now here is the Ruger PC carbine. And first of all, you will notice a cross bolt safety down here on the trigger group itself. And this trigger group shares a lot of components and design features with a 1022. So if you're used to the 1022, you will be used to this, including the bolt hold open, which if you've ever had a 1022 takedown, this is gonna be very similar. So you can manually hold the bolt, op bolt open by pulling the bolt back and pushing it on this button to hold it to the rear, which of course you will need to do when you take the barrel down, which I'll show you in a second. Anyway, take up basically is non-existent. There's very little. As soon as you start applying pressure to the trigger, it will hit that wall, go through into a nice clean break. I mean, there's very little sponginess or take up. And I'll go ahead and show you the, well, it's got a last round magazine hold open, so I will remove the mag. There we go. Probably should have done that first. A little bit of take up and right there's a reset. 
So a much nicer trigger at around five to six pounds. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the back ends and I'll start down here again with the PC Carby. Now again, from the front end of the receiver, uh, I'm sorry, of the stock all the way to the back, much like a traditional stock, it's all one piece. It's the same thing as this glass filled nylon stock or synthetic stock. Again, keeps that really nice thick feeling to it. You do have a Harris style mounting point here if you want to run a sling swivel back here you can do that. Now as you saw in the unboxing this does come with a total of three half inch uh, butt pads that you can use to extend it out. So if you do have a young shooter um, who maybe is going to increase their length of pull or grow up with the carbine a little bit you can do that without having to get a short stock and be stuck with that. So you see this sort of feature on shotguns a lot especially youth shotguns. So that's a nice thought but basically beyond that really good nice comfortable feeling very solid stock. Now moving up here, you basically just have a back tube, almost like a buffer tube on an AR-15. Of course, you do have your charging handle under here. There is a slot there, which gives you a lot of nice long travel for the bolt. The bolt is a two-piece machine bolt, which I will show you when we do disassembly. Now back here, you just have a polymer stock, very simple. Um, again, like the PC carbine, there are adjustable options. You will see here is a little cross pin holding the stock on. That's also how you disassemble the carbine. Here and here are two more adjustment points. So this is actually currently set up to its longest length of pull. You can bring the stock in one to two more notches, putting that cross pin back in, holding on the, the receiver tube uh, back plate. And you can even shorten the length on this a little bit. So you do have options there and that doesn't hinder how the carbine folds in on itself. Um, this is of course a steel tube and it is blued. Uh, there's really not much else to say about that. You do have your sling swivel here, but nice and simple kind of fitting the lines and the simplicity of the rest of the carbine. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about general disassembly and also the function of the Sub 2000. So first of all, to fold it, it's very simple. Right here in the trigger guard, it is actually a hinge point. The trigger guard is polymer construction. But you basically can just grab it. There are two little tabs you can grab onto just for easier handling if you like, but you basically just pivot the trigger guard down. And then once you've pivoted it down, the barrel group easily just folds open. You'll see the front sight base will start to pivot and fold as well, just like this. And it'll come back and just clip itself into place. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there is a, um, a little nub here. And actually, the uh, I, I was mistaken, I'm sorry. The, uh, the latching point actually latches around the front of the polymer handguard. It does not uh, latch into the sight base, but there is clearance back here for the sight base to just sit right inside uh, the back of the stock. So as you can see, just a really nice, easily held and compact little package can slip right into a backpack. Really cool over design. And that, this exactly right here is what makes the Sub 2000 really popular. In order to fold it open, again, you do want to pull on this latch to release it, and then you can open it up. Again, just fold and it locks itself right in place. So it's that simple. Now to disassemble, there is a, this latch back here, you can push forward. It is sort of acts as a butt or as an end cap for this receiver tube here. So you'll basically just push on that relieving pressure. Then right here, you will just push through this takedown pin. Um, I know right at first out of the box, these are, um, these uh, sub 2000s can be a little bit tight, but this one is used as I've mentioned. So the pin, I'm gonna play with it a little bit here, can just drift right out the side. And then with that out, you can remove the little locking latch and back plate unit, which is here, and also the stock. And that's what I mentioned, the stock, that's how you can see that this can kind of change its length of pull, because I can align it here, or I can align it here, or I can align it here, giving it the shortest length of pull, as you can see like that. So there is some adjustment there. Now from there, I will just bring the bolt back, grabbing the mainspring and guide rod. And then on the bottom here, I would just align up the charging handle and just pull it out and take it out. Kind of reminds me of a sten, the way that that charging handle pops out. Then I can just guide out the bolt the rest of the way. And it is a two-piece bolt. It is machined. Um, it has sort of a, um, almost like a parkerized finish to it, similar to the bolt coatings on an AR-15. So uh, very nice. It does have a hardened extractor. Uh, just a very nice durable setup actually. So basically all your weight is right here where it needs to be, which I really like. 
Now, like you saw in the unboxing, um, it does come with a little hex screw, which you will use for disassembly. And also here's your magazine well adapter for Glock mags. Now, of course, this takes the, uh, this comes with the Ruger SR9 magazines. It'll also take, uh, as it sits right here, the Security 9 magazines. You can also purchase an adapter if you have the Ruger American series of, of uh, pistols. You can get an adapter for those magazines, but of course that's not included. Uh, and then of course with this adapter you can take the Glock magazines. So, um, you know, there you go with that. Now first of all, in order to do this, I have to show you how to take off the barrel, which I'm sure you want to see anyway. So, the first thing you're going to do is lock the bolt to the rear. And if you are in an empty magazine, there is a hold open on the Sub 2000. We did not see a hold open. So we'll go ahead and remove the magazine and know that we are clear. So I'll set that aside. Now, right here on the bottom, there is a little lever. You will push forward like this and then twist and turn. And that will remove the barrel and you can set that aside. So again, this is sort of like your overall package. If you want to stow this inside of a bag or something, this is your overall package you will have to contend with. Now, uh, like not like the Sub 2000, they are two separate units. So you will have these two units floating around inside of a bag or something. Uh, so keep, keep in mind if you want to get something to secure that. I know the uh, Takedown 1022s uh, come with a little bag. Uh, I'm sure that these will probably in the future, they probably will fit. They might even fit in a 1022 takedown bag. Um, actually, I'm pretty sure they would. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind if you have that. So anyway, setting that aside and moving right along. Now, unlike the Sub 2000, you will need a tool to disassemble this. So it does come with a little hex wrench. So you go ahead and unscrew these and I'll probably travel ahead in time a little bit to uh, so you don't have to watch this whole thing. Okay, so I've gotten these loosened up and these are captive and stay in place, but you just loosen them enough to where they will kind of uh, disconnect from the receiver. So I think I've, I think I've got this loosened. Now from there, you can go ahead and just pull the receiver out from the stock and there is our receiver unit. Now from there, you can push on these two little cross pins and actually remove your trigger unit right there and then that'll give you access to your bolt. Now let's see here, allowing the bolt to come forward, you could take out your guide rod. Uh, first, you, you know, first you have to use a hex wrench which just also comes with to take out the charging handle and then that will allow your bolt to basically lift up and out of the inside of the receiver. I won't do that because I'm sure you understand uh, basically what I'm talking about or what the process is there. Uh, also, if you want access, the housing here on the trigger group is polymer just like the trigger is polymer in construction. The hammer and its internal components, the guide rod and, or the hammer spring and the hammer are metal. Um, but, you know, it's basically, I guess it's good just to keep the, a lighter weight. Now your bolt stop just pushes on this little lever, which would in turn push on this cam here to hold your bolt in place, which I saw when uh, we got it apart. Okay, so let's set that aside and I'll show you the magazine well replacement. So bringing the stock section back, this is actually pretty easy. So you'll see sort of the inside here, really nice polymer. Uh, there's a top of the magazine well for the uh, uh, LC9 magazines, but basically all you'll do is you'll push on the magazine release and then that will allow the adapter for those mags to pop right out. Then take the Glock magazine adapter with the with the ejector towards the back while holding in the mag release just drop it in and then release the mag release there. Now it'll kind of float around on you a little bit. Uh, that's okay. Once it's reinstalled, it'll all be there and held in place by the receiver. Now also you can use this as an opportunity to reverse the side of the magazine release if you want to as well if you're a left-handed shooter. Well that is all the time I have for you today on this. If you enjoyed that, please let me know by hitting that like button. If you want to see more videos like this, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel as we do a lot of tabletop reviews and comparisons like this. If you have any questions on these two, please leave those down in the comment section. I will try to get to as many of those as I can. Again, this is Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV. I will see you next time.